question, um, how do you manage the relationship between the city of Miami, Miami-Dade County and the state? And then a second question, which I think is a little bit more fun, uh, how do you spend your time during an average day? Well, first question is, uh, I, I could tell a, an off color and funny joke, but I'm not gonna do it. Um, I'll just say that we, I manage those relationships very carefully. Um, and, and, it's, and, it's, and, and they're, they can be very difficult relationships because uh, oftentimes there's inconsistency of, of thought, there's inconsistency of, of, uh, of ideas and how to solve problems. And so, and then there's overlapping jurisdiction, which makes it very complicated. And, and there, we, we often butt heads because I feel like I know what's best for my residents and people who are above me in, in, in a sense, you know, the mayor uh, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the governor also feel that same way. So, you know, that, that could create, that does create oftentimes conflict. How do I spend my day normally? I mean, I, I usually work 14 hours a day. <laughs> so uh, I, I try to get as much time in with my family on the weekends in particular. So my weekends are somewhat uh, sacrosanct, right? Somewhat, uh, you know, and, and I, so I try to keep them as clear as I possibly can. But, uh, but listen, being a mayor of a big city is, is complex. It's, it's difficult. It's a, it's a, you know, we're running a billion dollar company with 4,500 employees and four labor unions and all of the international problems that you can imagine. So anything, anytime anything happens, I'm getting a call. I need to react. I need to, you know, uh, so it's, it's, it's all consuming. Someone is asking about the degree to which uh, you um, represent um, the interests of underrepresented non-Hispanic minorities when you are courting um, companies that are thinking of coming here. How well, that's exactly what is that? That's exactly what I'm representing because we have a brand that's not just called Miami Forever. It's called Miami for everyone. And if we really believe in trying to empower every one of our citizens, then what we need to do is make sure that they have equal op opportunity to be successful not equal outcome, because that, that is something that's a different philosophy that we don't subscribe to, but an equal opportunity to be successful. And so I was very honored to participate in an initiative called Miami Connect that was led by Ken Griffin and the Miami Foundation and Access Miami, where Ken Griffin gave a $5 million gift. We all gave uh, some sort of matching contributions so that every child on free and reduced lunch, every child in Miami-Dade County, 100,000 kids could have free broadband access for two years. The digital divide is a very real um, class stratification problem. And our obligation as public policymakers is to give every child in our, in our community a real opportunity to be successful. And you need to do that through connectivity. You need to do that through digital tools, which I'm trying to find a philanthropist that will donate on the digital tool side. And you need to do that uh, through curriculum. Uh, and that's very important. Uh, curriculum is very important uh, because that's what teaches the kids how to be successful in that economy. For all the emphasis on uh, technology, a tremendous amount of Miami's uh, income depends on the hospitality industry, where to find uh, retail, logistics. What well, you're still focusing, obviously, on these core industries that have uh, been uh, the bread and butter of Miami up to now. We have to diversify. Anyone who invests in anything will tell you that a diverse portfolio is the most resilient portfolio because if something happens like a pandemic and you have your cruise industry, which is completely shut down for over a year, you have to be able to survive as a community. If you're completely relying on that industry for employment and for economic activity, you're in trouble. And you know the most I think all encompassing uh, uh, industry right now and in the future is going to be technology. Technology literally is a subcomponent of every industry and it touches every industry. So the beauty of it is if you have a robust, what I call knowledge-based economy, uh, you're gonna have an opportunity uh, to always be diversified, to always uh, be robust and always be resilient whenever there's economic shocks.